Jair Figueres scored in safety, 93 through 97. He truly cares. Not, not everybody truly cares. He truly, the guy yeah. really cares about a lot of things and really wants to change people's lives. And he can break something and tape it up or not tape it and still play. That was Jai. In the right place at the right time and would compete his ass off. Uh, a chip on the shoulder. Jai was one of the guys that was mad that USC and UCLA didn't recruit him and he played with that chip on his shoulder. Jai was just, he was scrappy. He was this, he was this hard-nosed, scrappy guy that would just, he'd run into a wall, he'd jump over a wall, he Almost every Oregon player should hear his story. Um, because of his ups and downs and the type of person he is today, um, I love the guy. The reason I chose to go to University of Oregon is, number one, it was Pac-10. Um, number two, it came down between Washington State and Oregon, and it was closer to LA than Pullman. And um, that's pretty much what it came down to, was just distance. My first impression of Eugene was when I got out of the plane, I smelled the air. The air was so clean. I wasn't used to smelling air so clean and crisp, and I could immediately sense that I was in a different place, but just the air, um, number one, number two, just how calm it was. You know, I was used to LA and traffic and people honking horns and it was just a lot faster, just the pace, everything just slowed down. So when I got to Eugene, I learned how to slow down, you know, how to be calm, how to be still. And I mean, it helps me now. Actually, everywhere I go, any any time I'm, I'm in a calm place, I always say, "Oh, this this reminds me of Eugene. This is just like University of Oregon." Well, it took me about probably half the season. Uh, the speed and the quickness of the receivers. I mean, I go from playing high school football to all of a sudden being on the scout team and guarding Kristen McLemore, who still, by far, I think is the greatest route runner at the University of Oregon ever um, because he was just so crisp and clean and in fact even when I train wide receivers and football players now I still take from what I learned from him and that was 20 years ago so that was that immediately that was a challenge dealing with the quickness of the receivers and another thing that was a challenge was uh, dealing with the cut block. I wasn't used to having to play cut blocks uh, before in high school. So all of a sudden I had to start uh, playing the cut block. Guys going for my knees. I wasn't used to that either. We started off one and two. We got booed off the field um, in Autzen. And after we got booed off the field, we kind of, that we kind of all banded together. We said, you know, we're not going to, we had to just a meeting just with ourselves. You know, we're not going to play for the media. We're not going to play for the fans. We're just going to play for ourselves, you know. And that was kind of the turning point was getting booed off the field in, in Hudson. Um, but I think also what was a big turning point for us was how hard we worked in two days that year. Because anybody that was on that 94 team, they remember how long two a days lasted with Coach Brooks. Like there was a time where we thought it was gonna be our last day of two a day. So we're kind of all dragging through practice, trying to act, you know, feeling sorry for ourselves and, you know, thinking like coach is gonna say, oh, well, you know, these guys, it's about time. We should probably stop it now. And I remember coach, you know, getting so pissed off at us at the end of practice. He's, you know, you're not done. We're not done yet. And he's had us do this one last, he had us do this, one extra drill because we were being like lazy and feeling sorry for ourselves and i remember running through running through the drill and he's like today's not the last day of two days tomorrow's not going to be the last day of two days and neither will the next day and i just remember you know just oh man in our minds we're like oh my god this is like incredible what the hell is he doing but i think that two a days that two a days combined with getting booed off the field 
Because when we got booed off the field, we were thinking to ourselves, we didn't just bust our ass all that time just to be booed off the field. And we're not going to have another season like the year before when they had a 35 point lead on Cal with all that talent. They had talent on that team that didn't win a lot of games. We didn't want to be like those guys. So we wanted to separate ourselves. Before the Washington, before that season even started, me and Kenny had gone to a basketball game against UCLA. Um, and I think his name, I think it was Kenya Wilkins might have hit a game, he might have hit a game winner, like at the buzzer, a three pointer. And they ended up winning the game at the buzzer. Everybody stormed the court and it was like a big, it was just crazy. And me and Kenny were just sitting in the stands and you know, we're saying, you know what, we're going to do that. We're going to do that next year. That's what we're going to do next year. And we were serious. Everything that we, me and Kenny talked about, it happened. But we said that with so much sincerity and we were so serious about it. Like we, we believed it. And the exact same thing happened in the, in the Washington game at home. You know, Kenny makes, Kenny makes his pick. Same thing. They rushed the field, but what the Washington game did for Oregon, and I think I might've heard uh, maybe like the former president of University of Oregon talk about it, was it, it, it made us start to believe. It made us start to believe in ourselves. We can do this. What, we can win. Why, why do we have to get on the field and all of a sudden think we gotta lose because we're playing such, you know, Washington or USC, right. you know, or UCLA. Like we started to believe in ourselves. Well, the year before I had Chad Coda in front of me, I was ready. I was ready to play. The year before, at least halfway through the season, I was, I, in my mind, I was ready to start. But Chad Coda was awesome, and that's one of the reasons that I was able to step in in '95 and play how I played, because I watched him for two years. I sat back and had to watch him for two years just to learn how to play right. Um, but that week, the Illinois week, I started off. On Monday, I was third string. Uh, on Monday, I was third string. We had our starter get hurt on Monday, then I was second string by Tuesday. Um, on Saturday, our first string got hurt in the third quarter, and then I became the starter. And within one quarter, I ended up, you know, coach called a great play, you know, blitzed in, sacked the quarterback, ball flew up, scored a touchdown. ESPN top 10 plays on Saturday night. Monday, third string, Saturday night, ESPN top 10 plays. And what I learned from that is, even when I was third string in my mind, I believe if they call me, I'm ready to go. I'm ready, I know all my stuff, I know all my assignments, I'm ready to go. Um, and when they called me, I was ready to go, so. Uh, Ended up starting the next week at UCLA, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, All-American, Cade McNown's first game. He lit our secondary up that that game. Um, it's a great game. Yeah, it was it was it was, it was a great game. Um, and I ended up making up ended up making that play. You know, in the in the end zone, they barely missed. You know, he barely missed the uh, end zone by that much. Um, then one, two, you know, two weeks in a row, you know, made the winning play, you know, two weeks, two weeks in a row. Next game against Stanford broke my leg. Um, both, you know, being in, I was in crutches for six months, so I didn't put weight on my leg for six months. And that was, that was difficult, just going through campus on crutches. Um, being in a cast all the time, having to take a shower a certain way. So that was hard. Yeah. yeah, it was difficult because Kenny was able to shut down an entire half of the field. And if we'd be playing in a zone defense, he would tell me, don't worry about me. Just go, go and play on the other side. He'd say that in the game. So to have someone that could shut down the whole side as a free safety, now that allows me to I can cheat over to the other side and make more plays. And I never had to make up for his mistakes. 
you know. Um, so not having him there, you know, we had a freshman, Rashad Bowman played awesome. Um, he was a freshman, you know, we had, we just had a lot of young guys. We had a lot of young guys that year and we, you know, we weren't, we weren't all clicking. Yeah, we definitely, I think that year, you know, our defense was terrible that year. Um, but we balled out that game. You know, everybody we had a good scheme that that game. Um, Air Force, I think one of the things that really helped us out is like we heard that Air Force was mad that they got that they that we were picked to play against them. They wanted to play against a better team. And when we did finally play them, it was like it wasn't even really like a challenge for us because athletically we were faster, we were bigger. Like, I mean, it wasn't even, you know, the Pac-10 conference, after playing in the Pac-10 conference and then going against Air Force, it wasn't even. When people think about Jaya Figueres, I just want them to, to know that I helped guys believe, you know, because that's one of the things that I'd always I'd always encourage guys to believe in themselves and believe in the team and, you know, we can do this back when nobody believed in us, back when they were losing all the games. Back in 1993, I remember I was constantly like, man, we should, we should be winning right now. You gotta, and I just remember, you know, a lot of the seniors just looking at me, just shaking their heads, you know, but just, you know, one, I, I believe just, people will remember me as a motivator. After college, moved to New York. I was gonna to go to law school. Um, could have went to the CFL after college. I said, no, you know what, had too much pride. I should only be in the NFL. I'm gonna to move to New York, go to law school. Um, ended up, you know, I was wearing, I was a law clerk, had to wear a suit and a, and a briefcase, take the train. I was like, what the hell am I? Actually, I gotta go to the CFL. And one year away from the game was like being five years away from the game. When I finally got to Canada, uh, game was fast. Game was a lot faster than I had been practicing. You know, I, I practiced against air, thought I'd go and play basketball, it just wasn't the same. Didn't realize how great a coaching that I had at the University of Oregon. Took it for granted, thought that I could just take off a year and do my own thing and I'd be fine. Anyways, tried out again a year after, went to Canada, got released, ended up being a high school teacher for three years, tried out again, trained everything, ran four, six, did good, no agent, finally gave it up. Uh, actually, Damon Griffin was my agent for a second. Uh, gave that up and I think now it's the year 2000. So since the year 2000 to 2013, I've been doing uh, health and fitness. Now owner of Epic uh, in Signal Hill. I'm one of the one of three owners here, along with uh, Kim Idio, Rick Mosley. Um, basically, we just do a lot of the same stuff we did at Oregon, help people, you know, overcome obstacles, you know, uh, achieve the seemingly impossible. And then we also have a off season, uh, football program that we're, we're, we're training kids with. Uh, got some of the top young talent in, in Long Beach. Um, and we also do SAT prep and tutoring for them. And we also partnered up with Damon Griffin and Integrity Sports and we do exposure for all the kids. So in my mind, this is it's kind of like a one-stop shop. If we could get a kid, you know, we could give him strength and conditioning, we can tutor him, and then we give him exposure too.